Okay, our last talk is Shi Li, and she will tell us about K-rings of wonderful varieties and big fruits. All right, uh, thanks for having me. So, um, so a little bit of a context. So I grew up in the land of modular space of algebraic curves. Um, so I study a lot about uh, modular space of uh, algebraic curves with arbitrary genus and arbitrary decorations. And turn out uh, combinatorics come to help a lot. So for example, I'm also motivated by problems in uh, graph theory and uh, matroids. And graphs are uh, finite points and edges between them. And matroids can be viewed as uh, certain uh, linear configurations in linear spaces. Um, and I'm also interested in tropical geometry. And so this talk will be uh, one instance of such interaction between these two objects. So let's start from uh, the classical uh, story of K-rings. So we can start with a uh, smooth and projective variety over arbitrary fields. Um, and then it might carry some vector bundles and we consider them all and form this growth and decay group of vector bundles on K. Uh, so it's uh, generated as abelian groups uh, by isomorphism classes of vector bundles um, and modulo the relation whenever you have uh, e, F, G forming its true exact sequences uh, like this, you uh, model by the relation that the class of F is equal to the class of E plus class of G. And by setting the class of structure sheep as one and the uh, multiplication of two classes as the class of tensor product, you get a ring structure on this thing, uh, on this structure. And you can then analogously define something uh, using coherent sheaves. Um, but Hilbert Caesar G's theorem tells us because we have a smooth project, uh, projective variety to start with, so these two structures are the same. So from now on, I just denote the structure as Ks. Uh, so in 1954, Hertzberg uh, extended classical result by Riemann Rach, uh, saying that there is an intimate relationship between the K ring uh, of a smooth projective variety to uh, something that's a little bit uh, well studied, the chow ring. So it's generated by sub varieties of X modeled by rational equivalences. Um, and then you can put a ring structure on it uh, similarly using uh, the fundamental class and intersection product. So there exists a morphism called the churn character from the uh, K ring tensoring with Q and uh, to the chow ring tensoring with Q, and this term character is an isomorphism. Uh, it's defined by sending, say, a line bundle to the expo exponentiation of the first term class of this line bundle. And to state this whole theorem, I need two other things. So the K ring uh, has a map to uh, the rational coefficients by taking uh, the alternating sum of uh, the dimensions of your sheep cohomology. The Euler characteristic. And in the towering side, you can take the degree. Uh, this is given by pushing forward to a point. So the whole statement says, the Hertzberg Riemann Ross theorem says, uh, when you want to compute the Euler characteristic of some vector bundle, you can push it to the towering length using this churn character and intersect it with the top class, and you get a bunch of points. Uh, you, uh, you don't necessarily get a bunch of points, but you you took you take the degree, and so you count the number of points you get. So let's this is a, a short example. So um, the K ring of P two is generated by O of one, and modeled by the relation where the structure sheaf of a hyperplane uh, tends three times gives you uh, zero, and on the towering side we have a similar uh, ring. Uh, using generators, uh, which are the class of a hyperplane. And you can you also get similar relations like this. And so the churn character will want to send the class of O1 to one plus hyperplane plus hyperplane squared divided by two. And the Euler characteristic of a monomial O1 to the M is given by this, and we can verify uh, so here we want to verify the whole case for rumor rock. Okay, this is what we're doing. And so this formula turns out to be uh, counting the number of lattice points in the m dilation of the convex hull uh, of the standard coordinate vectors in R three. 
So this is given by a class called toric geometry. We're viewing, viewing P2 as a toric variety. So here are two examples. So when m equals to one, you have this convex hull, uh, and you count the number of lattice points, you get three points. So that's exactly this formula. And when m is equal to two, you get this uh, triangle, and there are no interior points. So the boundary points uh, have six points. So that's exactly also coinciding with this formula. And on the right-hand side, I need to first compute the turn character of this vector bundle, and then I hand to you the top class. I take some intersection, and I compute the number of points, and I exactly get this. So in practice, this top class can be really hard to compute, and uh, it, the difficulty increases as the dimension increases as well. So we may as well go rogue and ask the following question, uh, whether one can replace the turn character and avoid the top class and also avoid tensoring with Q. Okay, here is the question we want to answer. Uh, if so, if we already have some trial ring, integral trial ring of our variety, then we automatically get an integral presentation of our K ring. And also we may get an easier computation of our Euler characteristic of arbitrary vector bundle. So uh, I, I guess part of my work is to answer this question, um, but specifically for uh, certain varieties that play a big role in combinatorics. So these are the variety, wonderful varieties for realizable matroids. And for arbitrary matroids, we have toric varieties. Um, and today I will be mainly talking about wonderful varieties for realizable matroids, but the story for matroids are uh, similar. So for those of you who are more curves minded, you can think of um, the M0 N bar, uh, delin mumford knudsen compactification of uh, M0 N as a primary example. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about the main role and how its geometry plays a role in this replacement. And we'll state the replacement uh, precisely. So um, the wonderful compactification is a compactification of the complement of a hyperplane arrangement uh, in a vector space. So here you take a vector space over K. So I, I draw the projective version. Uh, so here is a P2. And now I take a finite set of hyperplanes intersecting only at the origin. And they have to intersect. And they on intersect only at the origin. And it's indexed by this finite set E. So here on the right, I have E being the number of the set one through one, two, three, four. And they arrange like this. And now for any subset of E, I consider the linear uh, subspace uh, by intersecting all the hyperplanes indexed by S. And the rank of a set S is defined to be the dimension of the quotient space. So a flat is called, uh, some sets are more special. Uh, so these are flats. Uh, so these are the sets in E that are maximal among this rank. So in this, this example, the flats are exactly 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3. 1, 2 is not a flat because 1, 2 has this intersection, which is the same intersection space as 1, 2, 3, but 1, 2 is contained in 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2 is not a flat. Um, OK. So anyways, uh, so this, project, uh, this projective plane or uh, space uh, has a rational map into the product of a bunch of projective spaces indexed by the flats. Uh, and when you take the closure of the image of this projective space under this rational map, um, that you get that's the wonderful variety associated with this hyperplane arrangement. So what is this taken closure doing? It's doing nothing but just trying to modify the boundary of the hyperplane arrangement so that um, the boundary divisor is a simple normal parsing divisor. So sometimes this de description is more useful. Uh, so namely, you blow up, you do an iterative blow up of these linear spaces according to their dimension. So this variety has been important. And in 2004, people study their chow ring explicitly. And the generators are exactly corresponding to the flats of the hyperplane arrangement. And uh, Hutt and Katz in 2012 used the Hodge theory of this variety to deduce the log concavity of chromatic polynomials of graphs and also characteristic polynomials of realizable matroids. 
And they extended this to arbitrary matroids in 2018 using uh, a geometry of certain Tor varieties that's inspired by this wonderful variety. Uh, so furthermore, this variety also plays a big role in the proof of top heavy conjecture um, given by these two works. So for our purposes, in order to state the main result, we want to use a sort of change of variable uh, presentation of our chowry. So now instead of generated by X Fs as before, I, I have a new uh, set of generators denoted by H Fs, uh, still in bijection with all the flats. Uh, the key point to remember is these H Fs have extremely elegant uh, intersection properties. They're either one or zero, depending on uh, uh, in terms of combinatorial uh, properties of the underlying matroid. So this is work of Bachman, Euler, and Simpson. So now we're ready to state our replacement of the churn character. So in the case when X is a wonderful variety, and again, you can think M0 and bar again, um, and recall that wonderful variety sits inside of this projective space or a product of a bunch of projective space. So you can pull back an O1 from each factor uh, and if you pull back from the F factor, and I will denote that pullback as LF. And so this isomorphism between the K ring to the Chow ring now is sending one minus the dual class of LF to the generator, the new set of generator that I introduced, HF. And now it has a Hertzberg Rimmer Roth type formula that facilitates computations of Euler characteristic. Now, what you do whenever you want to compute a vector bundle or Euler characteristic of a vector bundle, you send it over to the challenge, not through the churn class, but through the, this zeta map using this formula. And now you don't want to intersect with the top class anymore. You intersect with this simple polynomial that's one plus h uh, e. Uh, remember, you, you have one h for every single flat. So e is also flat, e is the ground set, uh, plus h e squared plus da da da. And we under, through, based on previous work, we understand this intersection fairly well. So you get a bunch of points, you count the points, that's your ruler characteristic. So let me just say the key idea. So wonderful variety sits inside this product of projective spaces. So we really want to anchor the geometry of the wonderful variety using the product of projective, projective spaces, which we know better. Uh, so for each such factor, we actually have a similar ring isomorphism that replaces the churn character. So here is explicitly how it's defined. So you want to send not the O1 now, but you want to send the structure shape of a hyperplane to just a hyperplane. Okay. Uh, so this is on the nose not the same as the churn character. What does the churn character want to do? The churn character wants to send the structure shape of a hyperplane to one minus e to the negative h, which is expanded like this. And previously, yeah, so this is very different from this age. Uh, so, uh, and then at the end, what we did is because we have this uh, relationship between the wonderful variety and this product, now we understand the product or the K ring very well. And it's uh, a lot of work to make sure that the product of this kind of isomorphism does descend to the wonderful variety or restrict to the wonderful variety correctly. Uh, and so you, you, can also, you also need to check that this isomorphism gives you indeed uh, uh, or husband rimerach type formula on projective spaces. And that formula also has to descend to the wonderful variety. Okay, so this kind of thing is not coming out of nowhere. So previously, uh, shortly before we did this, and also concurrently, people have been studying permutahedral variety and derived a similar uh, replacement for the churn character and a uh, hertzberg riemann roch type formula um, by Burgett, Ur, Spring, and Tung, uh, and then separately by Ur, uh, He, and Larson in 2022. Um, but note that in both of these works, so these two varieties are Tor varieties associated with these polytopes. So this is the permutahedron, and this is so-called the stellahedron. 
you can construct this by truncating a cube. Um, so both of these situations are uh, smooth and complete Tor varieties. So both of these authors use um, Tor, uh, Torus equivariant localization techniques, but those are not available for wonderful varieties, which are not toric. And also those Tor varieties that are associated to a matroid are typically not compact. So our proof, uh, first of all, extend these two special cases. So these are also special cases of wonderful varieties. And also we give new proofs uh, for these new, uh, for all arbitrary matroids. Um, but we're very inspired by uh, their question or th their discovery of such a isomorphism. So application to curves. So as I said before, M0 and bar can be realized as wonderful varieties um, studied by these two uh, papers or many, many papers, but mainly these two. And also uh, there is a large family of uh, weighted, quantized spaces of weighted curves uh, constructed by Hassett. And they're also realized by Cavalieri, Hampe, and Markwick and Ranganathan in 2016 as wonderful compactifications of certain hyperplane arrangement complements. Uh, so in the near future, um, I'm trying to extend similar stories uh, to other uh, modular space of curves that I have constructed uh, before. And um, we try to make connections to a new type of combinatorial objects called multi-matroids which are metroidal structures that naturally arise in knot theory and topological graph theory. Uh, so, and I'm also interested in other interactions, but let me also end with a question. Uh, so what other varieties do you think will also enjoy such properties? Namely, you can replace the chain character, but still remain the isomorphism, and you can still compute the Euler characteristic, but you want to use a replacement of the top class that hopefully facilitates your computation. So, thank you. So, are these isomorphisms natural in any sense? Like, let's say you have some, some type of morphisms that are described from some sort of combinatorial data. Do they commute with pullbacks along such maps or something like that? I'm not sure if I understand natural. Maybe that's equivalent to this question. I don't know. In situations where you have something like this, would you expect it for other kinds of homology theories like algebraic boredism? Ah, ah, I think you asked me this before. So I have some homework to do. Do <laughs> <laughs> you know a simple example of a variety, say smooth proper, that for which this does not work, for which the answer to this question is negative? Good question. I do not. I think is that there, there is more than one way of doing this, like using uh, minus o of eight instead of o of eight for negative. Space. Uh, using what? Using. What, what is this unique when it exists? Uh, or there is only one natural. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I also don't know about uniqueness. That would be also interesting. Yeah. Maybe that's related to Tony's question about whether it's natural. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was just going to say, sorry. So were you saying that do you expect these methods can be extended to work for like MGN bar? Uh, uh, the cohomology of MGN bar is like very mysterious. So I, I don't know, I don't know. So in this one particular proof, at least the way we proved it, we heavily used the fact that uh, M0 and or, or wonderful varieties in general have uh, torsion free showerings. So it would be interesting if, if one can uh, surpass that. Um, yeah, so I know that higher genus modified spaces may not have torsion. Any other questions? So, could this, are you, are you proving this for all smooth projective torsion varieties or could be false in that generally? Uh, we're not proving it for all smooth projective right? so. So could be could be possible.
in der Kiesel kann sie da Rationale Gewalt ist das sehr mal algebraische Gewalt. Was das sagen wir denn jetzt? Äh, algebraische Gewalt, muss ich sagen. Aber grammatische Gewalt ist das nicht. Äh, sorry, uh, what's the same as the latter? So, ich will das äh, davor hin, so rationale Gewalt ist, aber der ruhige Gewalt ist man ganz ganz sicher. But that they're all the same in the example you can see them. Yeah, I think so. Okay, thank you very much.